Hi, I'm Sevin Yakov. This presentation is entitled Size of Inductors in Multi-Phase Converters. There are some relevant videos to this uh, presentation. Here are the links. I'm going to put these links on the page of the YouTube video that you are now watching. So what is a multi-phase buck converter, for example? We have here a number of switchers here. This is a synchronous configuration, upper and lower transistors. And we have in this particular case, three inductors, and they are fed with pulses, which are sort of shifted along the period so that the ripple is not at the same point, but it's shifted. And this, of course, brings about ripple cancellation at the output. So the currents are actually fed to the output and the advantages of a configuration like this are many. Uh, there is a low sharing, of course, each unit is carrying a proportionally lower current, input ripple reduction, output ripple reduction. There is possibility to go to a higher switching frequency, get a wider bandwidth, and also there is a fast response to heavy load uh, transient. For example, if the current is increasing uh, momentarily, we can connect these actually in parallel, that is to operate them at the same time. By that, we get like a smaller equivalent inductor, and therefore the slow rate will be much higher and we can very quickly supplement the required current. And of course, the cons are that it's a larger system, more expensive, and the con control is complex. Now, in this presentation, I'm concentrating on the size of inductor. The question is, okay, I have many inductors. What does it mean? Is it going to be an overall smaller inductor, larger inductors, and to what extent? Now, here I'm showing uh, some pictures of the ripple cancellation. This is the output ripple cancellation. We see that if you have like two phases, then a duty cycle 0.5 there is a complete cancellation because these two ripples are canceling one's the other. That is, this will be the ripple of one inductor and the blue one of the other inductor, and they are, of course, canceling out. So this is an advantage, and the same thing goes for the input ripple. That is, uh, the capacitor that you need at the input will be smaller proportionally because the ripple will be lower, and this, again, shows for a different number of phases. So again, what is then the size of the inductor in the multi-phase converter? I'm going to use the area product approach of magnetic design to answer this question. So let me go briefly over the concept of area product, and then we'll go on from there. So starting from Faraday's law, here it is, V and infinity, I can change phi or express it as B times N number of turns cross section area of the ferrite. And then I bring out mu, so this becomes H, magnetic field. And then with mu, I'm getting the I, and therefore we got the actually the definition of L in terms of these uh, parameters. And therefore, if I equate this to this, I can get an equation for the cross-section area of the core. Here, I'm expressing the differential as delta I, and this would be delta B. And I'm, of course, uh, crossing out this delta T. So this is the expression I'm getting. Now, the question is, what is delta B that I want, not what will be created, what will be the desired value. Now at high frequency, the limitation of delta B is losses. And here I'm showing losses of a particular ferrite material. This is 3695 of uh, ferrous cube. And this is loss per volume. This is here it shows in kilowatt per meter cube, but actually it is like milliwatt per centimeter cube, just different units. And here we see different frequencies. And what it says here, this is B max. So this would be delta B we talked about divided by two. What it says, for example, that if uh, 
B max is uh, like 100 milli tesla, 0.1 tesla. Then for say 100 kilohertz, the loss will be uh, this value here. Now it is important to realize the saturation of this magnetic material is around here, like three or 400, 500 a milli tesla. So we'll be walking here. So the limitation of delta B is indeed the loss, and I have to decide what is the the loss that I can accept, and this will be the value, and this will be the value that I'll put here. We now we move to another area, I and mean, this is the winding area, and we like to fill it up, and we can relate this area to the current that will be passing through the wires. The cross-section area of the wire is the RMS divided by J. J is the current density in the wire. It's a number like four, five, six amp per millimeter square. And therefore the area, the window area that we need is the number of this cross-section area n times, this is the number of turns, divided by k, where k is the filling factor. This is how well can you pack the wire. This is a number which is, of course, smaller than one. So you need an area which is larger than just uh, n times RMS over j. So having this and having this area, we find the product which turns out to be related to the inductance needed, RMS, the delta I, delta B, J, and K. So for a given design, we know all these numbers, or we assume them. For example, delta B, we have to decide how much loss can we tolerate. And from that, we get the AP that is required. So AP is a size-related parameter that I'm getting from the particular design and the operation, as well as the delta B that I've chosen. So once I know AP, I go to a catalog of ferrite cores and select a core that will be, have this AP or maybe higher than that. So this is the meaning of AP. So let's turn now to the multi-phase situation. There are a number of ways we can operate and design the system in terms of the magnetics. And I'm starting with scenario one, which gives good results, but it's a little bit wasteful. In this scenario, we are going to leave the relative ripple with respect to the average current constant. That is the ratio of the ripple to the average for each inductor will be the same as for a single inductor for one phase, okay? This will lead for a good, actually, ripple cancellation. So in this case, each inductor will carry a current, an average current, which is the average current of the single inductor divided by n, by n. The ripple will also be divided by n, but in order to get now a smaller absolute ripple, which is n times now smaller, the absolute value, I'll need an inductor which is n times larger. Now, what about the RMS? The RMS will be the I average square plus delta I over two and divided by square root of three because it's a triangular waveform square. So this is the RMS of an inductor in a single phase situation. Now, if we have n phases, then I have to divide this by n so it becomes over n square, and here also I have divided by n. This should be square here, I'm sorry, okay? It should be square also. So I find that the RMS of the single inductor in a multi-phase unit in this first scenario will be the RMS divided by n. Again, the delta i is divided by n, and ln is now times n. So if I now plug these in this AP equation, I have RMS divided by n, delta i divided by n, by l is times n, and I come up to the conclusion that the AP of the inductor in a multi-phase system is n times smaller than the 
AP of the single inductor in the single phase topology, okay, which kind of makes sense, okay? So overall, the APs are the same, and now they are distributed over the various inductors. What does it mean regarding size? We'll talk about it a little bit later. I'm moving now to scenario two, which makes all more sense, it's more economical. And in this case, I'm allowing a ripple which is larger by a factor of k sub r. Now, the idea is that if I have ripple cancellation, I might as well increase the ripple a little bit for reducing the inductors, the size of the inductors. So I can allow it because I have ripple cancellation. Of course, there is a matter of decision how much higher ripple I will allow, but I'm not going into it, just to say that you can increase the ripple. In this case, if you increase the ripple, rather than having n times L1 for each of the inductor, now it's divided by Kr because you allow a, lar a larger ripple. So in this case, the RMS of the single inductor, single phase will be this expression. In this case, the delta i is times kr, and therefore, this will be now the new expression. However, since this is square, and this is square, and then you take the square root, then the contribution of this k sub r to increasing the RMS is not large unless KR is very large. If it's not large, then this contribution is rather small, and I have here an example. Suppose this is 0.3, and then I move to 0.5, then this square root is 1.04 going to 1.11, while there was quite a bit of a change in the ripple. So if KR is small, you can neglect the change in RMS, which I'm doing now. If not, you have to take it into account. Now, if you neglect this increase in RMS, which will make AP larger, if you neglect this, then you are left with the fact that L is becoming smaller, and therefore the AP of the inductor in the multi-phase converter will be the AP of the single phase inductor divided by n, first of all, and then divided by kr. And of course, if kr is like uh, even times two, then this would be quite a bit of a saving, okay? So the saving is primarily here, but again, if kr is very large, then you have to take into account the RMS is becoming larger and you have to correct it here. But the question is, okay, and we understand what is the AP of these uh, inductors in the multiphase converter. What, what does it mean about the size and the weight of these uh, inductors? So I did some study here, and I looked up E cores, okay? And this is in the range of uh, 16 to 65. It's quite a range here, except to a very small cores talking about larger cores, and I found something very interesting. If you plot the volume, this is the volume of the ferrite from outside, the total bore volume. As a function of AP, you get a consistent trend, okay? That is, makes sense. AP larger, the volume is larger, obviously. But it's interesting that it's not one-to-one, -one, but it goes to the power of 0.74, which means that if you have a larger core, proportionally, its volume is smaller because this is a number lot smaller than one. And I have here an example. Now in this example, I'm assuming a multi-phase with three inductors, three phases. So I have N equal to three. So each AP is one third of the single phase converter. So if I look now at the ratio of the volumes between the single phase and the inductor of the multi-phase, I find that this ratio is 0.44 and not one third, this is 0.33. This would imply that the volume, the total volume 
of the system is in fact 30% larger than the volume of the single inductor. So in this case, you are distributing the inductances, that is, rather than having one inductor, you have three. Now the AP of each of the three is the same, but the volume of each of the three is larger. So you end up with a total volume, which would have been like the volume of a AP1, which is louder than by 30%. So the bottom line is that AP will be divided by N, but the volume will be somewhat larger according to this relationship that I found for E cores. I don't know about other cores. Now, what about the weight? Again, if we look here at the weight as the function of AP, we find a very nice trend. And then we have this exponential relationship with, which means again, that the total weight of three units, say in the three phase converter as an example, will be larger than the weight of the single inductor. So this is something that you are actually losing. Now, what about the window area? That is the number of turns I can put in. Again, we have a very nice trend, but in this case, notice that this exponential is 0.4, which means that the larger the core, the smaller winding area we have. So we have lower number of turns proportionally, and therefore the conduction loss will be lower while the core losses will be higher. So this is again, a very interesting trend that the larger the core, the smaller the winding area. And of course, proportionally, the cross section area of the core is larger. So what are the conclusions here? In a multi-phase system, we would have a reduction of the total size of inductances, that is the total size of AP, only if we allow a higher ripple per leg, okay? In this case, the total AP will indeed be smaller because we allow a higher ripple, so the inductance per phase is smaller. In E-Core, we found that the size is not linearly proportional to AP, but rather has some exponential relationship. And therefore, if you split the single inductor of the single phase into a multi-phase inductor, the size will be somewhat larger than the, the total size will be somewhat larger than the size of the single inductor of the single phase. And then we found that the large e core have a relatively smaller winding window, which means that you'll have fewer number of uh, turns in the window. So this brings me to the end of this uh, presentation. I thank you very much for your attention. I hope you have found it of interest and perhaps it will be useful to you in the future. Thank you very much.